Ladies and gentlemen. Does that include me? It certainly does. The secret word is water. W-A-T-E-R. Really? You bet your life. More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... I didn't know he was running. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck here will come down and pay him $100 in cash. The word tonight is water. Something I have very little contact with. <laughs> uh, Groucho, uh, we asked for some engaged couples just before we went on the air tonight. Oh, how nice. And um, just before we went on the air, Miss Dorothy Hildebrand and Mr. Eddie Kretz were selected to be on the show. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss Dorothy Hildebrand, eh? Mm-hmm. And uh, Mr. Eddie Kretz, a boy and a girl, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, where are you from, Dorothy? Los Angeles, 7031. And uh, what is your hometown, Eddie? Pomona. Pomona, huh? Yeah. What's your nickname, son? I'm sure your pals don't call you uh, Mr. Kretz. Well, <laughs> they wouldn't dare. <laughs> Kretz means scratch, I think, in German. <laughs> All right, fellas, says, well, I, I started from Kretz when I was a boy. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a good, noble, uh, Ameri- German-American name, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what, do, what do they call you, uh, Eddie? Well, uh, I have been called Hot Shoe. <laughs> you hot shoe? me. <laughs> you mean you say Hot Shoe and somebody says Gesundheit? <laughs> Why do they call you Hot Shoe? Are you, uh... Well, I mean, I... Pretty lively with the... Feet? Just don't like to stay in one place a long, long time, I guess. Oh, you're a rover, in other words. Rover. Oh, uh, vagabond, huh? <laughs> Song of the Road and all that sort of thing. Huh? Do, you, do you have a pet name, too, uh, Dorothy? Well, some of my friends call me Frosty. Frosty? Uh-huh. Well, uh, you can overcome that, you know. Uh... <laughs> I understand you're engaged, uh, Hotfoot. Uh, when is the fatal day? Well, I haven't quite made up my mind yet. That's what you think. Huh? <laughs> Footy, you're living in a fool's paradise. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Frosty? How far has this engagement progressed? Well, it depends upon the army. If he's taken in, why, we'll have to wait till he's out. But if he's rejected, we'll get married right away. Well, Hotfoot, I'm, I'm glad you finally made up your mind. <laughs> do, you, do you have a job, Frosty? Yes, I do. I work in the uh, county hospital as a cashier. Cashier? Mm-hmm. Oh. Do you have to pay to go to the hospital? Oh, no. Just to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's used that joke before. <laughs> What sort of work do you do, uh, Hotfoot? I work for my dad as a mechanic. What kind of a mechanic do you do? Well, an automobile. Repairing your father? Is that what you do? <laughs> Have you given uh, any thought to the obligations and responsibilities that are involved in matrimony? Oh, yes. I'd, uh, I'd have to stay home a little more at nights, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a kind of an ambiguous answer there. Well, I... <laughs> And I'll thank you not to be more specific. <laughs> I'm curious about today's young lovers, Hotfoot. When you want some excitement, what do you do? Do you look at stereoptican slides? No. Huh? If they go for a ride on a motor. Yeah, on a motorcycle? Yeah. Oh. You call that exciting? No, I mean, Have you ever sat with a beautiful girl and looked at stereoptican slides? <laughs> with all the lights turned out? <laughs> I've often wondered what was on those slides. <laughs> Now, after you after you married, uh, Eddie, uh, are you going to continue riding your motorcycle? Yes, <clears throat> I I thought I would. Mm. <laughs> You're not very sure, are you? Well, yeah, I'm, 
Well, I'm sure. I mean, I, that's what I... Are those like. your plans at the moment? Well, and not at the moment. I mean. You mean after you're trapped? <laughs> Is this agreeable with you, Frosty? Well, he won't have much time to be riding motor after we get married. <laughs> you're going to raise little putt-putts, eh? <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and uh, I wish you luck as you travel down the bumpy road of life. Both Frosty and Hotfoot. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. And now, uh, right now, here's some advice I want you to listen to very carefully. Friends, for the most comfortable ride of your life, drive the 1952 DeSoto. That's not just an idle boast, because the 1952 DeSoto, tops in safety and performance, is also especially designed for comfort. For instance, when you ride in a DeSoto, you sit on DeSoto's famous three-pillow chair-high seats. These DeSoto seats give you full support, let you sit naturally and comfortably without cramped positions. In a DeSoto, you enjoy the smooth, even, no-bump ride of Auraflow shock absorbers. And thanks to DeSoto's extra headroom, even the tallest people can sit and ride comfortably. You'll also find that it's easier to drive this 1952 DeSoto. The mighty 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine provides you with surging power at the touch of your toe, more power than you'll ever use. And listen, you'll discover that because DeSoto full-power steering works for you all the time, it takes all the work out of driving and parking. Long trip or short, it's less work driving a DeSoto. Stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. Make the five-mile trial in either the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the brilliant DeSoto Powermaster 6. Discover the unsurpassed pleasure of driving a DeSoto. And don't forget, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 19, which is sporting terms. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Talk it up. Fifteen. 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 In what sport is the expression touche used? Sword fighting. Well, that's close enough. Yeah, fencing. fencing. Uh, and you're off to a good start. You have thirty-five dollars. Maybe you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of your thirty-five will you bet now? Okay. Okay. Thirty. All right. In what sport is the expression lob used? L O B. Talk it over and take a guess if you don't know. <laughs> take a guess. Uh, well, you should have tried anyhow. It's tennis. You have five dollars. Oh, well, that's too bad. Here's your third question. How much of the five will you try? Now, don't be discouraged. Half of it. Half. Two and a half. Two and a half. And what sport are the expressions dribble and jump ball used? Uh, basketball. basketball. That's right. Now you have seven and a half. You now have seven and a half dollars, and it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? I don't bet at all. In what sport is the expression squeeze play used? Baseball. Oh, we well, should have known that. Oh, that's... National pastime. Well, we, nobody leaves here broke. We're going to give you one more question, and if you get this right, you're going to leave here with $25. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant is right. Give him the $25. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Uh, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a Which house... Which do you like, that? Dealers or dealers? <laughs> I hadn't really given that much thought. Uh... Well, think about it, Phantom. It's right, your I job, too. <laughs> While I'm thinking, I'd like to say that uh, just before we went on the air, uh, we selected a housewife from our studio audience, and her partner is a businessman, Mr. Arthur Laveau. Folks, would you come in here, please, and meet Groucho Marx? I think I like dealer. You do, well, welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Muriel Stetson, they say you're pretty tall. How tall are you, Muriel? Oh, I'm six foot and a quarter of an inch. You're six feet and a, a quarter? That's without shoes. That's without shoes, huh? 
Well, are you frequently without shoes? Occasionally. I'll have to go without shoes. See? Well, hand them over. I'll wear them, huh? Really? Well, I, I'm sure the quality is every inch as good as the quantity. Thank you. <laughs> what a sickening thing to say to anybody. <laughs> Arthur Levov, eh? Yes. Is that the way you pronounce it? Levov? Levov. Do you like Dilas better or Dila? <laughs> well, Dilas. Dilas. Well, that would go with Levov. Uh, Levov, it sounds like a cow pulling her foot out of the mud. <laughs> Moniker is Live Up, uh, or is that a perfume? It's supposed to be a French name. A French name. Oh, mm. See, uh, where are you from? Uh, Art Euro? New York City. New York City, huh? Well, that, is that part of France? Uh, uh, French Quarter? <laughs> no. What is a French Quarter? That's two francs, isn't it? <laughs> uh, who do you work for, uh, Art Euro? Uh, Pan American World Airways and Company of Mexicana de Aviación. Oh, well, I'm the same to you. Huh? <laughs> And uh, do you have a job, Muriel? Yes, I model clothes for tall girls, for tall fashions of California, and tall togs. Oh, tall togs, huh? Tall togs out of school, is that what you call it, huh? <laughs> Why is it you tall girls always marry skinny little runts? How big is your husband, for example? Well, he's a growing boy. He's six foot nine, and he weighs 270 pounds. <laughs> Say, he's a big little runt, isn't he, huh? <laughs> Now, Mr. Levov, uh, since you're connected with the airlines, do you do any flying yourself? I mean, in a plane, of course. Uh, no more. I am more concerned uh, with the study of flying saucers. Oh, well, how, how long have you been interested in flying saucers? About 20 years. Where do you think they come from? Well, there are several school uh, theories on that score. Uh, uh, some believe that they're from the solar system. Uh, the rest of us who subscribe to extraterrestrial visitors think that they are from another system entirely. What kind of characters do you think are in these sources? Well, physically, uh, we subscribe, by we I mean those of us who go into this, we subscribe to the theory that they are probably humanoid in appearance. Uh, by humanoid, I mean that, uh, that they will resemble us structurally. Uh, physiologists have concluded that the human figure is the best adapted for intelligent life. You're referring to your own, of course. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, for example, uh, the greatest medium to transmit thought into artifacts, things that you can make and use, tools, is the hand, the opposed thumb. No other form of life seems to have that. So it is reasonable to assume then, that while they may be reptilian or they might be even a form of insect life, still they would resemble us and that they would have arms and hands. Well, you think as soon as they get a thumb, they'll get in touch with us? <laughs> well, what is all this galloping crockery uh, doing here, do you think? I believe they are watching us, uh, evaluating our civilization, trying to cope with the problem of how to get in touch with us. Well, with the shape the world's in, if they're smart, they'd be over bothering Venus instead of us. <laughs> well, I don't know if there are any sources or not, but they certainly make interesting conversation. Now, folks, tune in again next week. Same time, same station. When our subject will be, is that funny little line across Panama Canal really a canal? <laughs> or is the earth really inhibited? inhabited? <laughs> well, I must say, it's been interesting talking to you two, and I hope you win a reasonable amount of money in the quiz. That's about as guarded a statement as I expect to make tonight. <laughs> right now, you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. The engaged couple went broke. So these people have a clear field. The secret word is still water. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous men of history. Each of these men played a prominent part in changing the history of his country. I'll give you the man's name and you tell what country he's from. How is your first question? How much will you bet? Um, Fifteen, all right. Talk uh, up, kids. Fifteen? Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Seventeen dollars. Okay. Seventeen dollars. All right. Richelieu was a famous man of what country? France. France is right. <laughs> You're on your way. You have $37. Well, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of you 37 will you risk this time? 35 Paul von Hindenburg was the soldier of what country? Germany. Germany is correct. <laughs> you now have $72. How much of the 72 are you going to try? 70 Okay. $70. $70. All right. Uh, Benito Juarez was the leader of what country? Mexico. Mexico is correct. <laughs> You've now climbed to $142. And this is your last chance to beat the other couple, uh, couples. How much will you bet? 
$142. Have you discussed this? Uh... No, that's all right with me. Okay. <laughs> From what country was Oliver Cromwell? Great Britain. If England is okay, we'll be by that. And you'll wind up with $284. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> you like dealers or dealers? <laughs> have, you, have you thought about it? Since yes, I've <laughs> And what, what is your conclusion? I, I like dealer, I think. Dealer, you like dealer? Yeah, I like dealer. Okay. So in the future, I'll say dealers. <laughs> Uh, Groucho, we have a couple of people with interesting jobs for you now. Uh, Mrs. Daisy Tate was chosen because of her occupation, and Mr. Russell K. Hart is a special guest. So, folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Dealer, say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Daisy Tate, eh? You're very pretty, Mrs. Tate. Uh, shall we have a tete a tete? <laughs> All right. Where are you from, Daisy? Selma, Alabama. Selma? Did you come with a banjo on your knee, uh, Selma? No, but I know the man that did. You did? <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Daisy. We haven't had anybody from Alabama here for quite a spell. By the way, you're not running for the vice presidency, are you, Daisy? No. You're not, huh? No. Well, you can't be too careful these days, you know. <laughs> Some of these candidates will do anything to get on television. <laughs> now, Daisy, does a gentleman from down south ever ask a lady her age? Never. Well, I'm a skunk from up north. <laughs> How old are y'all, Daisy? Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine? <laughs> well, you're the prettiest seventy-nine I've seen, Daisy. Now, Russell K. Hart, eh? You'll forgive me, sir, if I devoted my attention to this charming little lady. <laughs> oh, brother, cotton wouldn't melt my mouth, would it? <laughs> Russell K. Hart, what is the key for? Crumb. Did you say crumb? Is that whole wheat or pumpernickel? Where are you from, crumb? And where do you, or where do you crumb from? From Illinois. Illinois, yeah? Are you running for president? <laughs> no, sir. Let's see, you got a hole in your shoe? <laughs> That's how we tell nowadays. <laughs> Are you married, Mr. Hart? Yes, I am. Oh, then in your case, it's two hearts and three-quarter time, eh? No, three hearts. Sorry, I'll bid four spades. <laughs> how did you meet Mrs. Hart, uh, Russ? Well, it was in the eighth grade in grammar school. I sat behind her. And uh, she never liked me very much because I used to put her pigtails in the inkwell. And I didn't pay very much attention to her for the next four years. And then when I was a senior in high school, I dated her. As she was living in the old soldier's home at the time. And you were after her for her pension? Is that what? <laughs> no, you see, her father uh, worked there. Oh, and, uh... Dipping we... pigtails or something? <laughs> no, he was the chief clerk in the treasurer's office. Oh. Well, you know what you were doing, eh? <laughs> now, uh, Daisy Fenneman, uh, Mr. Fenneman, says you have an interesting occupation. What do you do? Are you a steeplejack? No, I'm a model. A model? <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon, Daisy. That was just an old northern reflex. <laughs> You're a model, you say? Yes. What, what kind of a model? From, uh... Portraiture, commercial, portraits, illustration. Commercial portraits. Yes, for instance, uh, in the latest home journal, my last work was I was a, a married woman with a son that I was wild about. And I saw that he was going to marry a woman that I didn't think he should marry. But he married her. This is fiction. Mm hmm This is the story was, that... This uh, is a story. I see. And finally, my son had to go to New York. He just couldn't stand the gap. Huh? Was he a fisherman? <laughs> now, Fenneman says you're a special guest, Mr. Hart. Why is that? Are you a model, too? No, I guess it's because I'm the mayor of Santa Monica. Really? <laughs> you look so honest, Mr. Hart. <laughs> I'll 
behalf of the 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, I welcome you and present you with this key to a new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Thank you very that much. That is the key. Now, all you have to do now is go out and buy the car. <laughs> Mr. Hart, how long have you been mayor of Santa Monica? About 18 months. 18 months. I'm a babe in the woods about such things as politics. Maybe you can straighten me out on a few things. For example, uh, after your mayor, will you be an ambassador in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an administration do you have? Is your city pretty clean? Yes, it's really very clean. In other words, since you've been mayor, you've been cleaning up. Is that it? <laughs> I'll confess, Your Honor. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, Groucho, all I receive in a monetary way for being mayor of the city of Santa Monica is $50 a month. The city council is made up of a group of seven professional businessmen who are elected to follow out the good old American system of a representative government. And they're taking their turn on the city council as a civic duty, and certainly not for the $50 a month that they get out of it. Well, it's, it's wonderful to hear that, Mayor. And I think uh, you deserve a lot of credit. And if all the politicians listening uh, took a page out of your book, you could be sure of one thing, Mayor. You'd never get those pages back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, could you describe Santa Monica for our Eastern listeners? For example, uh, just where is Santa Monica? Well, Santa Monica is a community two miles square. It is bounded on three sides by the city of Los Angeles and on the fourth side by the Pacific Ocean. In other words, you're between the devil and the deep blue sea. <laughs> Tell us some more about Santa Monica. It sounds like a very interesting little town. Well, it is. It's a very beautiful community. It has a, a population of 75,000 people. We have fine public buildings, lovely churches, public schools, and we have two miles of the finest public beach in Southern California. So we have a lot of things out there. We think it's really a very fine place to live. Well, I think it is. A friend of mine saw your beach one day last summer when the fog lifted for a minute down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've kidded you, Mayor Hart, but I want, I, I want you to know we appreciate your coming down here tonight, and I'm sure you're a fine public official. And if you're ever investigated by Kefauver... My advice is buy a ticket to Mexico City. <laughs> right now, you two are going to play your bet your life. Run your 20 bucks and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our second couple, Mr. Laveau and his partner, are ahead with $284. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected States of the Union. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? And talk right up, Daisy. You're a partner in this. 19. Nineteen. How much? Nineteen dollars. All right. Uh, Lake uh, Okeechobee, I guess it is. O k e e c h o b e e. Okeechobee. Okeechobee, huh? <laughs> eh? No. Well, I haven't been down there in a hundred years, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> it's one of the largest freshwater lakes in the United States. In what state is it located? Okeechobee. Uh, and if you don't know, take a guess. New York. Well, you're, you're quite a ways off, Mayor. It's Florida. <laughs> now have one dollar. Now you're down to one dollar. Huh? Might as well bet it all, hadn't you? <laughs> all right, Randy, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. There's no telling how it'll come out, you know. You're going to bet the dollar. Franklin D. Roosevelt used to visit Warm Springs for treatment and rest. In what state is this located? Georgia. Georgia is correct. Well, you now have two dollars. Here's your date question. How much of the two? Let's bet it all. That's right. Bet it all. Okay. Purdue, Wabash College, and Culver Military Academy are just three of the many institutions of higher education located in one state. What is the name of it? Indiana. Indiana is right. Now you have four dollars. Is your last chance to be the other couples? How much are you going to go for? Four, uh, four dollars. Four dollars. Chesapeake Bay with its famous oysters, bisects, and uh, an eastern state. What is the name of the state? Maryland. Maryland is correct. <laughs> Well, they wind up with only $8. Nobody leaves here with $8. I'm going to give you one more question, and this is for $17, which will bring your total up to $25. And no coaching, please. You ready? Mm-hmm. What fruit is used in lemonade? Lemon. Lemons is right. Put it there, Daisy. And, uh, 
Since these people wound up with only $8, that means that our second couple, Mr. Laveau and his partner, with $284, in just a minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> If the brakes of your car aren't behaving the way they should, if there's any question in your mind as to whether they're safe or not, then before another day goes by, get a thorough check of your brakes at the place where they know your car best, your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. There, master technicians, brake experts, will, if necessary, remove the wheels of your car and give the drums, shoes, and hydraulic system a thorough inspection. They'll adjust and equalize the brakes scientifically and fill the master cylinder with the correct brake fluid. As a final check, they'll test for safe, smooth, straight-line stops. It'll be an efficient, reliable job. Count on that. And count on receiving fast, courteous service, too, at a fair price. When your car leaves your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's service shop, you'll know your brakes are right. You'll drive with a feeling of security. So have your brakes checked tomorrow where you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, here comes Mr. Laveau and his partner, the winning couple, all set for the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Groucho? Right in here. Well, you'll be able to buy a lot of sauces if you win this money tonight. <laughs> here we go for $1,000. I give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Here it is. In Shakespeare's Henry IV, Henry V, and Merry Wives of Windsor, there appears a cowardly braggart whose good humor and wit have endeared him to millions the world over. For a thousand dollars, I want you to identify this genial fellow. Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided upon? We hope it is pistol. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the correct answer is false, Dad. Oh! So well, that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz? Uh, $284 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to you, to both of you, and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto Fire Dome 8 tomorrow... Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Keep your wits and windshield clear. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> <laughs>